Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and this is going to be a very special guide in how to take down the final boss of Act 6, that is the 6.4.6 Grand Master and basically going over what is to be a how to make this more easier for a lot of players. This video is broken down into various sections from best paths, counters and as well breaking down the phases with footage of the fight itself. Obviously you can skip to wherever you like and as well go check out my Discord where I've got this as a full write-up up for you to read through if you don't want to watch through the entirety of this video. And before going anywhere, I just want to shout out three specific videos where links are in the description down below. The first one being MCSU's journal's video, which was obviously all about the prep side of things. Metal Sonic Dude for the way he handles the fights and as well understanding intercepts and when it's applicable to then go in. And as well be an inspiration to a lot of players in how to really play in this day and age. And the final one being a very interesting bypassing inverted controls video using Mr. Sinister by Legacy. Now from an initial clear standpoint it is difficult to say which is the best route. Many people say that the Sunspot route is actually the best route to go down. If you're not familiar which one that is that is one with Sunspot being the mini boss and as well on this particular route it is Polka.Power which is the big node. Many people do say that there's another route to go and that is the buff gener- <clears throat> and that is the buff duration route. And obviously it's all about applicable to what sentinel you take down as to what it actually means for this boss fight. With the one main route that a lot of players point out as going down is opportunistic, which basically means that the length of time of wounded is actually not as long as it should be. But the route that I took with liability being taken down basically means that the amount of tokens of competence that can persist between fights is increased to a maximum of 10. However, the tokens of blunder required for the game over is now Three. So basically I'm all about that token of competence and as well we'll talk about that and what that means in a moment and how important that could be to the way you play. But also something to point out is as you go further through and the thing that was getting me a few times was the rule set valuation and by taking down that particular aspect which is the evaluation route here, it will mean that you'll be able to deal with unblockable effects better because effectively that first beam attack from the SP1 is no longer unblockable, which makes it so much more easier. So in some ways, it's up to you how and which choose which path you choose as to make this fight more easier for yourself. Okay, now let's talk about best counters and mastery setup. First of all, with the best counters, I don't think you can really say there is a best counter for this, but there's definitely stuff that's going to reduce your suffering and as well things that will make you think that things are going better than they are by having a certain champion that maybe has a higher block damage threshold. So one thing that's able to kind of take a lot of block damage like uh, Beardo, like uh, Doctor Doom, you know, any champion that's got uh, armor in it, that's uh, Colossus, you know, there's loads of different examples. But also champions that are able to deal with inverted controls could be very helpful, like your Emma Frost, like your Mr. Sinisters, and also champions that gain armor, like uh, Colossus, and so many others that could be really effective for these fights. But also don't undermine lots of different champions that are really fun, like She-Hulk and ramping up champions that do amazing damage output, prowess champions, the list goes on. And as the future goes on, new champions being added to the mix like Red Guardian and so many others will hopefully deal with a lot of the problems that this fight has to offer. And as well, I'm really looking forward to this champion. But that's by the by, let's move on. Now, even though I've seen plenty of people utilize different types of masteries, I personally found a standard mastery build to be effective. I did have at the start of doing my Grandmaster fight masteries that did incorporate things like liquid courage and as well double edge and as well with recoil did mean that this fight was actually pretty unenjoyable and i wasn't having a very very good time at all fighting against the fact that when i was throwing an sp1 which was handy to then put the debuff damage with my uh, my beard out it was recalling damage it wasn't what i wanted so i felt that a mastery change was was quite apt and as well i did a quick little change around keeping in things keeping in mind energy resistance not completely needed it just helped out with a few things here or there okay let's go over the sp1 and that is the name of the game keep the champion to the sp1 the beam attack caught me a few times and I do want to try out champions that maybe could deal with this but as well we have gone over the path that you can take down to make that fight more easier if that is something that you would think is a limitation that uh, you might have in your playing ability. 
And once you've understood that, you've then got to understand the SP1's first beam. It's that essential part. Iron Man is probably a good practice point. This first Iron Man that throws, throws a beam. Uh, the OG one, just to understand that kind of swipe back, needs to be fluid. But also the second part to the special attack of the SP-1. Now you've got the beam part of the SP-1 out of the way, what's next? Well, this is the mini little challenge that you get. First of all, you will get a randomizer of three images ping up on the enemy, and that is what you need to do. At this point, say things out loud, because that is the most important thing. The instructions will be, if it's a red fist, you need to get hit. And if it's a blue shield, you click down for a block. And if it's a green person, that's your cue to evade. And that's the thing. Every time you see those markers, say it out loud. Get hit, go in a block, evade. And then it's a point, as soon as that's done, you need to rush towards the enemy, especially if they're going to be in a wounded state. You need to maximize the damage output as much as possible. The downside is if you fail to do any of those, you do get tokens of blunder. And at the end of the day, the more tokens of blunder that you get, this will cost you in game. Okay, a little note from me on the SP2. And you can find this really annoying, especially if you go down further phases and it's not throwing. Stay in a block stats as best you can and try and ride it up. That's probably the best thing I can really say. That's obviously where champions that power control could be relatively helpful-ish, but also maybe champions that uh, have strong block damage potential or um, good block proficiency in armor, which we've discussed about earlier. Okay, so now let's break down the phases to make them as easy as possible. And as well, I'll be showing footage of things that went right and also things that maybe went wrong as well, just to get, give you a bit of perspective. Something to point out for those that are maybe a bit unsure that is rules of fight, which you can see on screen at the moment. And basically something to bear in mind is that the Grandmaster becomes infuriated for six seconds before the next phase officially begins. While infuriated, neither champion can gain power and, gram and the Grandmaster is unblockable, indestructible and very aggressive. So it's important to keep your distance, or maybe like hit into the block a few times, swipe back, go back in again, try and intercept as best you can from time to time as well. Okay, let's start with phase one. This is your opening gambit. This is the most important thing to give yourself a rhythm. Doing intercepts are gonna be helpful to give yourself those tokens of competence, which obviously are gonna add up for the extent of damage you can do with a critical rating and obviously with the wounded state. Now, this is all about the tactics and starting off as well. Hitting a few light attacks isn't good. Do the one, two light attacks, make sure you see the pop-up, which will be on the enemy's side and it will pop up with a little thing saying, okay, well, this is the light attack. This is the dexterity when you've been swiping back and then it's put that up there. And the final thing will be doing a parry. I always like going down the method of starting off with dexterity because it's easy to begin with. The second thing being doing the light attack and then relax with the parry, which obviously then puts it into the state of completing uh, that particular tactic that uh, you need to facilitate. And also if you need some great advice or kind of great kind of visuals of the intercepts playing out well, go and watch Metal Sonic Dude's video because it's just a masterclass of how this needs to be performed. And as well, the thing that comes with this is that after all three tactics have been banned, because that's the thing, you need to get your tactics banned, they instantly unban and the Grandmaster performs an SP1. And during the phase, each time Grandmaster finishes his SP1, he becomes wounded for eight seconds. And obviously this is the point that you need to attack. Keep that momentum up, keep that damage up. If that competence is there, then it means you're gonna be doing a lot of damage and obviously bringing down this first state, which again is gonna be incredibly important. Let's now move on to phase two. This was actually pretty fun. And especially over the right hand side where it's got the enemy, so the Grandmaster, it will come up with what the challenge is. And I'll be several different things as you can see on screen at the moment. With an attack, land a critical, perform an intercept, gain a buff, inflict a damage effect. Now, obviously there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five challenges to be completed. So as it even says that during the phase after each challenge has cycled one time, the Grandmaster is wounded for seven seconds. Please concentrate on doing the challenge rather than anything else because that will be the problem. You have to concentrate on the SP1 still, but at the same time, it's just the challenges. With an attack is probably very effective if you remember to click 
for a light and then swipe back and go into block or you know hit go into block it's probably important to do that uh, whilst you're at the back of the screen in order to make sure you're not hit whilst you're kind of like uh, swiping back or trying to dexterity and it's not really working obviously if you've got the dexterity mastery it will be handy for gain a buff and also when i said about the champions inflicting off the sp1 or saying with a, a heavy attack sp one's a little bit more easier to do you can obviously do that to inflict a damaging effect but obviously there are other options for that it's not always about that final thing to mention about this phase is this champion is immune to all stun debuffs so don't try and do the parry stay in a block if you can and keep your distance and as well throughout this phase this champion is building power a lot more easily but obviously if you can uh, try to keep the champion baited to an sp1 it isn't it's easier said than done especially with the fact that sometimes the ai has been wanting to just throw those sp2s which uh, happened to me a lot of the time okay phase three up now similar as the one before the challenge is a little more easier i would say strike into block that's really easy to do you just got a time when when it's important to like hit in perform a back dash and obviously that again is uh, really straightforward you know swipe back four times five times whatever times that you need to perform a knockdown obviously throwing an sp1 or a heavy attack i would probably say recommended to throw an sp1 i just find that would be a bit more easier to do form well time blocks easier said than done sometimes that's worked out well for me sometimes it hasn't so obviously do bear in mind sometimes things will work things will not work as well and obviously after every fifth challenge because you have to do five challenges in a row you then get the wounded state and that is something that is very important to do obviously something to mention is that even in the sp1 and as well i think as well with the um the challenges uh, resetting in the wounded state uh, it's, it doesn't reset so when you're wounded and sp one it does mean that the challenges are paused so that's that's good in some ways it allows you to then get back into the rhythm of things however though the biggest crucial thing about this phase is that every 42.50 seconds the summoner's controls are reversed for 8.5 seconds uh, and obviously this is something to bear in mind when you're thinking about champions to use now mr sinister i believe emma frost are champions that uh, do not get affected by inverted control so there could be some viable options for you if you do struggle with inverted controls whatsoever so um, good luck to you on this one i made sure to do as much damage as possible within that time frame of the um the inverted controls it was only one time i think it was that i was able to do it before the inverted controls came in and then it's uh yeah it's it's very difficult to kind of do it just before it usually happens after and now on to the final phase phase four this is checkmate between one percent and zero percent health the grandmaster becomes infuriated for 18 seconds during the final countdown he's also permanently unstoppable however intercepts disable the unstoppable effect for 1.2 seconds when infuriated ends the grandmaster becomes impermanently wounded for the rest of the fight and will only take damage from the summoner's sp3 so there's some good to this bad situation my particular advice with this is to stay into a block stance as much as possible keep your ground because and then light evade backs from time to time because what you need to do is go like light evade back go into block light of a back going to block especially if the enemy is coming towards you if you are confident with your intercepts go for it if you're against the wall do bear in mind that the grandmaster comes at you with an like an up swipe so if you swipe back away and evade the heavy attack go back into block it's not the best way to play out 18 seconds but it could be an option for those that maybe are are very nervous very kind of cagey fighters and practice that try being thrown to the back of uh, the screen by a wall and just try and practice that kind of swipe back away from some particular champion going up against that does um like uh, a kind of up punch juggernaut would be a good example to train against but as well you can bypass this and bypass this particular section if you do the following now i did this i'll put it on the screen at the moment where i build up the champion with an sp3 then i managed to get wounded just at the point of ending phase three and because i ended phase three and went from the point of four percent so if you do the wounded at four percent on the enemy on up phase three and then you're kind of like hitting through on wounded and then go into an sp3 it did actually bypass that phase and went from the end point of phase three past phase four and that obviously picked up the win doing as much damage through there that took you know that uh, remaining four percent away and boom 
picked up the victory on that. But obviously that is uh, up to you if you want to choose to do that. But obviously hopefully the methods of that phase four helped. Right, final thoughts. And as my friend Stormchaser said to me, and I agree with this, the Grandmaster fight is no joke. It's legit. It's skill-based and you have to be your best on the day to take him down. When you re-enter the fight as well, just to mention, uh, try not to make a mistake. This champion will also have that kind of infuriated when you go back in and you have to do the same principle. So it's good practice to kind of go, right, well, I'll keep my distance. I'll uh, make sure to keep up with uh, hitting into the enemy. Hitting into blocks as well will kind of like take down the time a little bit until the point that infuriated goes and you can get back into the fight. I would say on units wise, if you are a very skilled fighter, you won't need many units, but I would probably say have about 2000 units there just in case, especially if you're a very nervous fighter. I did put on some boost from time to time, so that could be an option to help you out, but it's completely up to you if you want to add those boosts to your fight. And there we go. Hopefully this guide has helped out. It's basically a guide of how to easily take down the Grandmaster. And uh, hopefully this kind of like went off quite well and everybody enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, check out the Discord as well, where the write-up of this guide is. And check out some of the other content on screen at the moment. I thank you very much for supporting this video and see you all very soon in a live stream on Twitch and also on YouTube and also in another video. Bye-bye for now.